Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop here. You can see I'm uh, doing a little whittling on the motor mounts that I had cut up there. There was a little tip right here that I had to shave off. It, it's in there, there's a weld in there, factory weld, that's hanging it up just a little bit. So I had to trim just a little bit more off. And for that I used the cutoff wheel and a flapper disc. Again, I, I promised you my review on the only flapper discs I buy. Totally. This brand right here. See if I can get that on frame. However you say that. Weiler. Wheeler. Anyway, the Tiger, whatever. Uh, 40 grit is pretty much my standard. Uh, I will jump up to 60s for polishing. But I buy these 40 grit by the, by the case. They are a little bit more money, but the difference is, look how much more material you got with these. These suckers will last and last and last. All the other ones, even the ones that cost more money, they don't have a lot of disc, a lot of the sandpaper on them. And I just burn through them. I, all I see is just dollar signs flying with every spark with every one of those other ones I get. So I gave up and all I use is this brand and this style. Yeah. Also, you can see, let's see, they're a 90. I know after a while this will wear down into you know the standard cone shaped ones you see all the time, but I can get right in on a hard angle that I need. Say I, I'm working on a 90 degree and I got to get a flat in there. I can grab a new one of these, chuck it up, zip that part off, pull it off, throw in a, an older one that's rounded on here that's been used for a little while and go right back into my flat, nice, easy polishing, well, uh, I call these polishers. They're, they're not actually polishing, but it's how I get that uh, flat surface, even easy grinds. Again, with only this brand. This is the only ones I have found that do it. And boy, like I said, I buy them by the case. I get them at air gas, but the money that they have saved me with trying all them other ones totally 200% worth it. <laughs> anyway, let's chuck up and I'll uh, chamfer that one off and I'll polish it up and then we'll test fit it. So here we go. Let's try a little uh, more of them nice sparks flying around that everybody likes to see, right? The grinder I use also, I've tried all of them. Uh, Honestly, I used to use nothing but the Harbor Freight cheap ones because they actually worked really good, but I don't do them anymore. I actually go over to Lowell's <clears throat> and these Porter cables. Um, I have abused the heck out of this one. And well, at the time it was 30 bucks at Lowell's. Same price as the Harbor Freight one. And I've had a lot better luck with this one. The Harbor Freight ones now, uh, I don't know what they did. They changed and they're crap. I don't buy them anymore. But for the same price, I get this one at Lowell's. And I, like I said, I have abused the heck out of it. I do wish that this still had the uh, brushes, interchangeable brushes. So I get in there and change the brushes on them. But those days are long gone, I'm afraid. Anyway. That's the four inch grinder I use. Also, uh, it's around here somewhere, I keep it over there. But the handle that goes in here that you're supposed to have on here with the guard and everything, the guard is a quick release pivot guard. Uh, and in the handle, it's a, uh, they're degreed off. So it's more of a this way instead of a right angle. Makes it easier to, get in there and do heavy grinds with 
but if you notice while I'm using this I use a light hand on it and I do use the hard switch style I don't like the paddle switch because I'm on this for a long time but if I'm in a danger area my finger is on that so when you're hearing me grinding or using the cut off especially with the cutoff wheel you hear me using this and it'll cut out cut out I'm, it's on purpose it's because I'm holding my finger on that so if it kicks back it releases that and it doesn't it shuts the grinder off so it doesn't come back and get me so again if you see me using this and you hear it like it's cutting out and it's not working right it's actually doing what I want it to be doing is because I got my finger on that button so every one of those cutouts is when it's kicking back on me so it, it, it acts as a built-in safety that I've just learned to use as I'm doing it because again I'm using a light hand on it if you muscle up on a you know and hold it like you're scared on these four inch grinders that's when they get you so it's a hard thing to explain in video but you got to get a feel for your tool and it'll come natural to you as you're using it just uh, my biggest advice on a four and a half inch grinder don't be afraid of it uh, if you get afraid you're gonna muscle up and bad things are gonna happen so that's my little take it for what you will but anyway let's get some work done let's get some sparks flying good hell seven minutes come on get busy the gloves I use are just the cheap ones too actually these ones are more money uh, I did spend a little extra on these because it's all I could find but I go through a lot of them so actually for grinding I found TIG gloves I like to buy the TIG gloves they're almost the same price and they seem to last a little better so when I'm at Harbor Freight I'll just grab a pair of those Vulcan uh, TIG welding gloves and I do most of my grinding with them I just I need to buy another pair <laughs> but they're about the same price and they got a good feel that protect you and actually they're longer on up here so I don't burn my sleeves up another little quick tip for you there see it hardly even scuffs that and since it's flat I can get a true grind on it instead of the angled ones uh, they're just a superior uh, flapper disc to every one I've tried out there some of them I was given twice the price for the, one of these and these just outshine everything uh, another thing about these the flappers you get real tempted because it's sandpaper right to knock the paint off and stuff rust it does okay on but when I go into heavy paint removal I'll use this guy but this one I know everybody calls the cutoff wheels the spinning wheels of death these suckers you got to be very 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 careful with if they catch anything this sucker's coming back at you so when you see me cutting a lot of paint or anything like that I'll use this or heavy rust um, but again when you watch me use this my finger is on that button I'm standing away from it because yeah this sucker will get you paint will plug this up so then you got to go in and find a hard 90 and brrr, grind it down to get into good pad again but it just it just eats these up I don't I'm cheap I don't like to spend money so I protect these as much as I can anyway let's toss that in there and see where we're at with it okay let's test fit her in there again 
See if I whittled her down enough. It looks like it. Perfect. She lays right in there now. I got good weld area there. Let's try the other one. My other one is right in there where she needs to be. So now all I got to do is center that motor back up. What we'll do here is we'll rope this water pump with my rope here. Get that light out of the way. And I know that's got to be 18 and a quarter to right there. I checked it, double checked it, triple checked it. Oh my goodness, we're right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. So I'll lock that just like that so I can see it. Well, no, it is favoring this way, just a tad. Right there. Go over that way, over that way, over that way. <laughs> if you don't know what that knot is, that's the same knot you use for uh, roping cattle. <laughs> for calf roping. Poop, 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 you're done. And I look like I got good clearance there. That's right where I want it. Now what I'll do is I'll crawl back underneath the car. Right now I've got it set on a, I run a crossbar across and then I stuck two uh, C clamps on the oil, on the transmission pan so it would hold the transmission right square on that <clears throat> so I know it's dead even in the back as well and I got it pushed as far as I can it actually is favoring the passenger side just a just a smidge. Uh, it's as close as I can uh, to make room for the steering box. Uh, let's see, it was, oh, it's less than an eighth that I've got it pushed over to the passenger side, which is close enough to center for me. I mean, it's a driver. It's not, I, it might lose a little torque in the drive angle now. I ain't even worried about it. it that's, that's racing stuff. This is driver stuff. And I got to make clearance around that uh, steering box. That's my main goal. And keep that engine dead nut straight in there. So when I open the hood, you, you won't see, uh, like I said, it's, it's in between a sixteenth and a eighth of an inch favoring that side. I can't go any more than that on that side because uh, you'll see uh, the exhaust manifolds get real close to that upper control arm too. <laughs> I mean, when you put a 460 and a 58 Fairlane, yeah, it's, it's tight <laughs> to say the least. Uh, underneath, I've got good pan clearance for that cross member so I won't have to beat the pan you know cut the pan or cut the cross member and shape it down either right where she's at I got good clearance in there as well so well good clearance in uh, Ford standards if you ever have to pull the pan you got to pull the motor on it uh, it's pretty common on them but I was really trying to avoid that <laughs> but anyway She's in, so now I'm going to hook up, and the next you'll see me uh, burning them in. So I'm going to give you a little quick run around, and you can see exactly how those fit in there now. Uh, I'll try. It's tight in there, so 
you're going to see some funky camera work here. So uh, take your, uh, what is it, Dramamine, motion sickness pills, and uh, here we go. I'll, sh I'll show you around in there. Okay, this is the driver's side. You can see how it wraps right around, follows the contour of that spring tower right there, comes around into the cross member so I can get a good bead across there and a good solid bead all the way across there. And then my gussets will come underneath here. Grab that light. Now I'll gusset off the bottom here across to here. That'll lock it in and I'll run another gusset across to here to tie it in. So I'll have a triangle here out to here and another one to here. Again, I'll use that scrap material that I cut off here for that. Um, I did try to flip these upside up on the other way, but this piece right here hanging down in here was too much and I'll, I'll actually cut this down to make it more uniform and it gives it a, sm a small gusset here to keep that from walking any. Uh, I'm not real concerned about it. This is going to hold it just fine. But you can see the, the way she fit there. There we go. Nice and solid in there. On this side. Same thing. Get that ratchet strap out of there. You can see how tight I am here. Why I was fighting that room there. I still want to make it so I can get that exhaust off of there easy. I don't want this to end up being a Mustang. And you can see down in there, she lays right. Let's see. Boy, this is tight and hard. I'll oh, try it from this way. There, you can, see, you can see how she lays right in. So I can get a good burn on there. And again, back on the tube cross member. And then again, I'll repeat it here and put another piece coming off of here over to here. Gives it that triangle strength. And I also, I put them down like this. Uh, in a racing application, I would have tried more to keep this side down and the other side up and lock them in that way for engine torque because these things like to torque this way. So down on this side gives it more strength for the up on this side and then I'll, I would have countered it on the other side to keep everything locked in good. But that's racing. This is this is a driver, so it doesn't matter. Uh, that'll be plenty strong for what I'm doing. So my next step now is to get some good solid tacks uh, on here. When I do those tacks, I'll do them on one side only. Uh, and by ta heavy tack, I mean it's going to be a weld about like that. Two of them right here in this corner and one over on that corner. To lock it and hold it so when the base weight of the motor comes on it, it's not going to try to move or anything. And like I said, I make sure this nut is, or this bolt is centered in there, neutraled in there. So when I pull the engine back out, it'll be an easy, and it comes back in, it'll just be an easy right into the hole. And it won't be torqued one way or another, this way, you know, the bolt will line right up with the hole. Uh, again, making everything easy later on down the road. Also, one of the hidden things I did find with these motor mounts, uh, if all else fails, again, after I cut this back like that, I can undo it from the motor this way and lift the motor out. There's plenty of room to get to the block bolts as well as the center one. So it'll come out either way is what I'm trying to say. So that's where I'm at today. Uh, right now I'm going to clean up a little more of the rust around here 
so I get a heavy good weld and next you'll see is me playing with the welder <laughs> all the steps to get to that point all right so meantime uh, keep the metal hot and get up there and uh, break something <laughs> the only fun times to build something is when it's already broken right <laughs> all right so stay tuned for the next one and uh, we'll see some sparks flying and some metal getting hot all right we'll catch you on the next one